Hello viewers, thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marilla. I'm always very uh, honored and I feel privileged when the Lord allows me to uh, be the vessel to bring the word to you wherever you at, praise God. Um, we started a new series, of course, but we're still in the book of Romans. And the name of the series, uh, or the aim, is remain faithful, remain faithful because of God's grace. Praise the Lord. So we need to remain faithful because of His grace. Praise God. Uh, let's, with that said, let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and put our heart and our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray by saying, Heavenly Father, today in the name of Jesus, we're going to use our faith to believe in the blood. The blood is a weapon of power. Praise the Lord. And we're going to declare today in the name of Jesus that we are armies, uh, soldiers of the army, but not just any secular army, but the army of the Lord. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be soldiers for you, and we thank you for the blood, which is a weapon, and we thank you for Jesus, which is a higher weapon and lives inside of us. And we can say today, all of us that are here are seeing the impossible, and those watching, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I thank you for your son Jesus, and I thank you for the blood, and I thank you for the word. Oh, my God, what a wonderful father we have. And in Jesus' name, I want all God's people to say amen with me, and amen, and let's give God a wonderful applause. Praise the Lord. And then we surrender to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Like I said before, the name, the new aim is called uh, uh, remain faithful. Remain faithful because of God's grace. Praise the Lord. And now we're going to go to Romans uh, briefly. Romans 11, 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. And then we're going to try to go through, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 6 through 11. Praise God. Um, so in Romans, please go there, Romans chapter 11, praise the Lord. Let me go into, yes, I do. Uh, okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, in verse 1, he says, I ask then, has God rejected his own people, the nation, the nation of Israel? Of course not. Of course not. Why did he say that? Because he says, I myself am an Israelite. Praise the Lord. I myself am, am an Israelite, a descent of Abraham. Praise the Lord. And a member of the tribe of Benjamin. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in other words, he's saying, mm -mm. I'm a Jew too. I'm also a Jew. So if God didn't forget me, he's not going to forget the Jewish people. Praise the Lord. All right, verse 2, he says, No, God has not rejected his own people, whom he chose from the very beginning. Do you realize what the scripture says about this? And then he goes on saying, Elijah the prophet com complained to God about the people of Israel and said, verse 3, Lord, they have killed all your prophets and torn down your altar." I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. In verse 4, God says, And do you remember God's reply? In verse 4, he said, No, I have 7,000 others have never been bowed down to Bala. In verse 5, It is the same today for a few of the people of Israel, Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace. His undeserving kindness and choosing them. Praise the Lord. So God has chosen the Jews and God has chosen those that he wants to choose. Praise the Lord. So according to Romans uh, chapter 11, verse 1, uh, I'm going to ask you this question. Does Israel still have a great future in God? Does Israel, we're talking about the nation of Israel, does it have a, a, a great future in God's plan? Of course it does. Yes, it does. 
And then, of course, God in Romans 11 has demonstrated that commitment, praise the Lord, to Israel, praise the Lord. All right? And even though Israel has continued to rebel, okay, and reject Christ. All right? That's why in Romans 11, 1, you think this is a question, but it's really a, not a question. It's a statement of fact. Think about it. Let's go back again, please. 11, 1. He says this. He says, I ask then, has God rejected his own people? So you think it's a question, but it's not. It's a, state, it's a statement of fact. The nation of Israel? Question mark. Of course not. I myself am an Israelite. So in other words, Paul was saying, I'm proof that God has not forgotten Israel. I'm proof because he hasn't forgotten me and I'm a Jew. So he ain't forgotten them. Praise the Lord. And then, let me see something here. Let's go to... Um, Mm. Let's go to Psalm. Let's go to Psalm 94. Go to Psalm 94. Okay, go to, go to the book of Psalms. Okay, you got, you got your pens and your paper and you got your, your, your Bible, right? What time is it? It's word time. It's, it's time to study. Praise the Lord, the word. We're here to get trained mentally so that our mind can line up with our spirit. All right? Praise God. So Psalm 94. Let me see this. Yeah. Go to verse 14. Okay. Psalm 94 verse 14. When you're there, just give me an amen, please. Thank you. You're there? Oh, my God. You guys are good today. Amen. All right. So in, in Psalm 94 verse 14, we'll cross-reference the statement. The Lord will not reject his people. Who are his people? Israel. And here in Psalm, he says, The Lord will, will not reject his people. He will not abandon his special possessions. Praise the Lord. The Jewish race is God's special possession. Praise the Lord. And so are we. All right, and so are we. And don't forget, we have this message because the Jews rejected it. As, as I said to you Sunday when we were together, and I'll go over it again a bit, you know, Paul and Jesus, well, Jesus and Paul, they used to do this. They used to, when they hit a town, the first thing they hit was the synagogue. And after they were thrown out of the synagogue, you know where they would go? They'll go with that message to the Gentile, to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right? And, and that's why, and, and, and uh, I believe it is, oh God, it's in, it's in Romans chapter 11, I believe uh, 13, 13 on. Yeah, Paul is, don't go there. Paul is re rebuking the Gentile, saying, don't get high-minded now. Because some of the Gentile, are you listening, class? started thinking, huh, we're better than the Jews. God's rejected the Jews. No, God has not rejected the Jews. The Jews rejected the Messiah, whom we call the Messiah, Jesus. All right? Because they never rejected Yahweh. They always have loved Yahweh, Adonai. Are you listening to me? Praise the Lord. Okay. So, if we go back now, now, th there it is. Paul stated, he stated this, this line of evidence in Romans 11, 1. For I am an Israelite, a descent of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Jew. And if God didn't forget me, he didn't forget the nation of Israel. He did not forget the Jews. Praise the Lord, okay? Okay, all right, good. So let's go back to Romans 11, uh, eleven two this time, eleven two please. Paul gives us a, another illustration, a second illustration. Praise the Lord to demonstrate that God has hasn't rejected Israel, the way the Gentiles us thought. Oh, 
God has given up on them. No, 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 no. No such thing. Okay, Romans 11.2. So in 11.2 he says, once again, no, God has not rejected his own people. Whom he chose from the very beginning. Do you realize what the scripture says about this? Elijah the prophet complained to God about the people of Israel and said, let's stop there, and said, all right? Okay? Elijah in the Old Testament, praise the Lord, complained to God about the Jews, praise the Lord. He says, they're tearing up the place. They're killing the prophets. They're breaking the altars down. Now they're going to come after me. God says, relax. You know, you ain't the last one left. I got more. <laughs> I got more people serving me. Please, family, receive this. And these people are not afraid to get their butts up and go out there and preach the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. They're not afraid to do that. That's what God was telling him. So stop it. Okay, stop it. Amen. So, in 1 Samuel, go to 1 Samuel, please. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Let's do that. We're going to do a little go back and forth thing. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22. 1 Samuel 12, 22. This will back up uh, the second illustration that Paul was demonstrating that God hasn't rejected Israel. All right? So here in 1 Samuel 12, 22, the Lord, uh, the, the word of God reads like this. The Lord will not abandon his people, comma. Now, who doesn't understand that? The Lord will not abandon his people because that would dishonor his great name. Praise the Lord. He's Yahweh. For it, it has pleased the Lord to make you his very own people. How many of us understand? He's talking about who? The Jewish people. Praise the Lord. All right? Okay, good. Let me give you another um, 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 illustration to demonstrate. Uh, Jeremiah 31, please. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31. Here we go. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31. And then we're going to do... Uh, Thirty-one, thirty-seven, Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-seven. Oh my God, this is powerful. Thirty-one, thirty-seven. You there? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So in Jeremiah thirty-one, verse thirty-seven, this is what he says. This is what the Lord says. You notice in First Samuel. It quoted, this is what the Lord said. So it's God speaking now. Are you hearing me? God is speaking through his prophet. First Samuel, now the weeping prophet, Jeremiah. Okay? So God is using a, 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 a major prophet to talk to us, not a minor prophet. You got major prophet, you got minor prophet. He says, this is what the Lord says. Just as the heaven cannot be measured... And the foundation of the earth cannot be explored. So I will not consider casting them away for the evil they have done. I, the Lord, have spoken. Praise the Lord, somebody. Let's give God a hand for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'm so glad. Because guess what? How many of us love Jesus? Raise your hand. Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was a Jew. How many of us like to like and respect the disciples. They were Jews. I got news for you. This book is for Jews. Amen. <laughs> it's a Jewish book. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's go back to Romans chapter 11. Romans 11. It's a Jewish book. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the New York coming out of me. Oy vey. It's a, it's a Jewish book. <laughs> I wish I could do a couple of other little words, but I can't. I'm on the pulpit. All right? It's a Jewish book. So go putz around somewhere else. That's Yiddish. <laughs> go putz somewhere else. <laughs> putz. Praise the Lord. All right. Romans chapter 11, verse 4. And do you remember God reply? He said, no, I have 7,000 others who have never bowed down to Baal. Baal. It is the same today for a few of the people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace. It's God's grace. It's God's, everything that we have is because of God's grace. It's like what Harry was saying before, the, the, the roof over the head, uh, the four essential things. What is it? Uh, fire, water, shelter, food. Praise the Lord. We have it. Praise God. We have it. Amen. You know? And, and, and we have it because of God's grace. Okay? Okay. Now, um, here in verse 5, he's talking about there was a minority of Jews that have obtained God's righteousness. God's grace. Praise the Lord. But the rest of the Jews, he said, stayed blind or in a deep sleep. You understand? So you can be blinded to something. Or you can be in a deep sleep. And, and what it meant by that, you, you can have your eyes shut. And your eyes can be spiritually closed. And then you can have your ears closed or shut. How can you shut your ears? You don't listen. How, do you don't, how, how can you not listen? When you have unbelief, Instead of they having belief over a matter, they had, uh, they, were, they had unbelief of this Messiah. Because of their unbelief, praise the Lord, their eyes and their ears got closed. All right? Are you listening to me? And it can happen to us too. All right? Go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah 29. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah 29, Isaiah 29, go there first, please. Isaiah 29, chapter 29. And then go to, uh, yeah, go to verse 10, verse 10. You there? Isaiah 29, verse 10. That means I can read. For the Lord has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep. See? He has closed the eyes of your prophets and visionaries. All the future events in this vision are like a sealed book to them. When you give it to those who can read, they will say, we can read it because it's sealed. Verse 12. When you give it to those who cannot read, they will say, we don't know how to read. In other words, what I'm saying to you is, some had their eyes closed. If they have their eyes closed, how can they receive in the spirit? Praise the Lord. Their spiritual eyes were closed. Remember a couple of weeks back I told you that God used Mo, uh, uh, Pharaoh to bring glory <laughs> he used Pharaoh's hard heart to be able to, to bring glory to God. <laughs> That's why he says all things work together for good. Because of their rejection, them rejecting Christ, they have their eyes and their ears closed. So God has allowed this deep sleep to go unto those Jewish people that do not want to accept Christ. I'm sorry. I have to say 
what the Bible is saying. So, uh, this disaster, you know, praise the Lord, you know, having been in a deep sleep, you know, it was like what David prayed. Oh, God, I'm going to say it. What David, are you listening? What David prayed when David was king, what he prayed to come on his enemy when the Jews rejected the Messiah, those prayers kind of came on them. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, go back to Romans. Go back to Romans, please. Romans, uh, Romans chapter 11. That's where we're at, right? Romans 11. And this time, uh, go to verse 11. Okay, and let's read 11 and 12. He says, did God, you there? Yeah. All right, great. He said, did God, did God people's, did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient. There you go. Hello? They were disobedient. <laughs> because they were disobedient. So God made salvation available to the Gentile. There you go. What did I say before? That Jesus used to go to the synagogue. And when they didn't receive him in the synagogue. What is the synagogue? The Jewish temple. We still have them now. And he would go there and they didn't receive him. Okay, then he will go next door to the Gentiles. Amen. And the Gentiles will receive him. All right. Let me give you, okay, let's do that. Let's go to, uh, go to Matthew, man. Go to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We'll go back to Romans. Go to Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12. I know exactly where I'm going. Uh, 12, 9. Matthew chapter 12, verse 9. Okay? Here we go. When you're there, give me an amen. Then Jesus went over to their synagogue. Jesus did what? Went over to their synagogue. Where he noticed a, a man was with a deformed hand. The Pharisee asked Jesus, does the law permit a person to work by healing on the Sabbath? What they're telling Jesus is, you can't do this. The law does, here we go again, going back to the law. The law don't let you do this. You can't, you can't work on Sabbath. And you're going to heal this guy? That's working. But Jesus was so witty. Jesus Hit them, not physically, but where their pockets hurt. And you know a Jew, you hit him in his pocket, he's going to hurt. <laughs> okay, here we go. He says, <laughs> and I love my Jewish phrase. I love my Jewish family. Praise the Lord. He says, does the law permit a person to work by healing on the Sabbath? They were hoping he would say, yes, now I got gotcha. you. You're admitting you're breaking the law. So they could bring charges against him. Verse 11. Now Jesus answered. He said, If you had a sheep that fell into the well on the Sabbath, will you work to pull it out? Of course you would. Verse 12. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, the law, yes, comma, yes, the law permits a person to do good. Man, please, those that have an ear, let them hear what Jesus is saying. To do good. See, Rory, I love you. He's saying, he's saying this. You call it work. I, I call it doing good. You got it? You call it work. I call it doing good. So I'm not breaking the law because I'm not working. I'm doing good. Praise the Lord. He says, yes, the law permits a person to do good 
on the Sabbath. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Go to Matthew chapter 9, please. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. There's so much food in this. We can, you know, we can stay here like... <laughs> Matthew 9 and go to verse 35, please. 9.35. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it is 35. There we go. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom, and he healed every kind of disease and illness. That was his ministry. Are you listening to me? His ministry was teaching and healing. And when you go into uh, the house of the Lord, there should be teaching. Man, I wish you guys didn't do me like that. There should be some teaching and there should be some healing going on. Praise the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if you came bummed out in the house of the Lord, you should leave with joy. Praise the Lord. And encourage. Praise God. That tomorrow is another day. Praise God. Amen? Amen. So, Jesus faced a fair amount of opposition in the synagogues. But what did he do? From the synagogue, he used to go, when they rejected him in the synagogue, what would he do? <laughs> Michelle's laughing. He would go to the Gentile. Hey, praise the Lord. So because of the Jewish rejecting, are you listening? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm pulling teeth here. So, so, because, this is Bible, man. Because the Jews rejected the gospel, the gospel came to us. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, Paul, if you, if you go to Acts, go to Acts, please. This time, let's go to Acts. Let me see this here. Acts chapter 18. Mm. Mm, thank you, Lord. Wow, I love it. Okay. 18, verse 4. Go to 18, verse 4. It says, But many of the people who heard their message believed it. Gentiles and Jews also. So the number of men who believe now, the total about 5,000. Praise the Lord. Are you listening? Amen. And then if you go to, uh, let me see something here. I can find it. Lord, I know it's here. It's in this chapter. Yes, it is. Okay, here we go. Okay. 1819. But Peter, go to 1819. You're in 18, right? Oh, wait a minute. Where am I? I'm in chapter four. Apostle, I'm in chapter four. Please forgive me. So here we go. Okay, here we go. 18. Okay. Okay. 18, excuse me. 18. Verse, verse four. No, verse four. 18, verse four. Okay, thank you, Father. There it is. Each, I received that. I received those 5,000 getting saved. Hearing, you, you, God, thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. For, thank you, Holy Spirit. I received that. Are we in the sleep? Are we in the sleep, family? Listen to what the Lord's saying. All right, if you can't listen, let's move on. 18, man. Acts 18. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 18, verse 4. <clears throat> 18, verse 4. Acts 18, verse 4. Each Sabbath found Paul at the synagogue. Well, just like Jesus. <coughs> trying to convince the Jews and Greeks. Sounds like Gentile to me. I like. 
Praise the Lord. Okay? Now go to 19. <clears throat> stay, in, stay in Acts 18. And we're going to verse 19 now. It's my Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to blame it on something, you know. <clears throat> okay. And then he goes, here it says, They stopped first at the port of Ephesus, where Paul left the others behind. While he was there, he went to the synagogue. To synagogue. That's 18, 18, 19. He went, 18, <clears throat> 18, 19, brother. Praise the Lord. So there he went. They stopped first at the port of Ephesus, where Paul left the others behind. While he was there, he went to the synagogue. To reason with the Jews. I love this. See, he couldn't even teach. He was reasoning. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, look, this is the way. And they were like, no, we're not accepting that, Paul. Paul, you got, you know, you got a nice way, but we're not accepting it. Paul, your, your speech is so elegant, it almost convinced me if I didn't know better. Well, what, they were, what they were really do, sh demonstrating, they were demonstrating unbelief. Praise the Lord. Did you get it? Unbelief. All right, here we go. So, uh, one more now. I'll give you one more. Uh, go, go now to Acts 19. So, you were in 18, 19. Now we're going to Acts 19. <clears throat> Let me get there and I'll show you. Uh, here we go. No. Yes. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, you're good. Verse 8. Okay, now we're in Acts 19, verse 8. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, man. Okay, here it says, Then Paul went to the synagogue. And what he did? He preached boldly for the next three months, arguing... Oh, my God. Persuasively about the kingdom of God. Come on, verse 9. Verse 9. But some became stubborn, rejecting his message and publicly speaking against the way. So Paul left the synagogue. And, oh, thank you. And took the believers with him. Then he held daily discussion at the lecture hall of Tyrannus. I can't even say it right. Tyrannus. Tyrannus, thank you. Someone that can read. Praise the Lord. Amen. With the Gentiles. You, please listen to what the Lord is saying. Please listen. So, what happens? When they were thrown out, of the synagogue, they took the message to the Gentile in those areas. And after years of this, it seemed to some of the Gentile that they were higher than the Jews. They became conceited. Please listen to me. Man, I feel you, Lord. You can't become conceited just because you got a little bit of information. <laughs> so, you know what Paul did? He began to talk to them and say, don't think of yourself more highly than the Jews. Paul started giving them a warning. Stop doing that. Now go back to Romans 11. I hope I can finish it. Romans 11. Verse, Romans 11, verse 13. Oh, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Romans 11, man. Romans 11, verse 13. I said verse 13. He says, I'm saying all this, especially for you Gentiles. In other words, I'm warning. I'm giving you this warning. 
See, Paul wisely knew how to warn. He warned the Romans not to be arrogant, not to be conceited, come on now, about God's love for them. The only reason why we have the message, praise the Lord, please family, listen. The only reason why we have the message is because God loves us. We did nothing to deserve this message. And Paul was very wise. He said in verse 13, I'm saying all this especially to you Gentiles, for you Gentiles. God has appointed me. Watch. He was a Jew, but, but he was an apostle for the Gentiles. He wasn't an apostle for the Jews. He would have been if the Jews would have accepted him. He says, I'm saying all this especially for you Gentiles. God has appointed me as the apostle to the Gentiles. I stress this. For I want someone. Look why he's doing this. Look why he's doing this. Verse 14. For I want someone to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I might have, so I might save some of them. Praise the Lord. In other words, I want their eyes open up. Praise the Lord. I, I want them to come out of that sleep. And then he goes in verse 14, 15, excuse me. For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world. Are you listening? For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world. Their acceptance will be even more wonderful. Wow, are you listening? Oh, God. That's it. Can't give you no more. That's it. Praise the Lord. All right, viewers, I want to thank you so much. Praise God. Remember, uh, Paul was not um, angry. He was just warning the Gentiles. He's warning us and telling us, you know what? The same thing God allowed to them to go into a sleep, he can allow you to go into a sleep because of your unbelief. So open up your eyes and open up your hear, ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Thank you so much, folks, for uh, tuning in and watching these videos and receiving our teaching here at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. And uh, I hope that you're hearing and you're obeying, praise the Lord, <laughs> will we'll, we'll manifest some action. Praise God. All right? We'll see you real soon. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>